Birmingham, Alabama, where Puddles and I are here with Jay Evans. Jay, it's great to see you. Great to see you, Mike. Uh, Jay is principal trombonist of the Alabama Symphony Orchestra, and uh, you do many summers at the Teton Festival Orchestra as well. Yeah, the last 10 years I've yeah. been going out there. That's pretty good. That's a nice band. It's a nice vacation, and it's a great band. Great players. I'm very lucky to, to do that and uh, have the time off with the job here. That's great. And uh, Jay and I go way back uh, to, gee whiz, Charleston Symphony Days and Savannah Symphony Days. Right. And yeah, I was living in New York and would fly down. Yeah, second trombone. They didn't have a regular second trombone position. I was in school with your sister Wendy. That's right. I have to throw that in. Yep. Yeah. Hey, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah. So I played with my buddy Bill Davis those years. Bill Davis, Dan yeah. Satterway. Yeah. There was one particular week uh, when the Hurricane Hugo was about to hit. This is a little story that uh, is, is, is a. One of my uh, brushes with possible uh, disaster, they uh, said, you know, you might not want to come down this weekend um, because of the storm coming through. And uh, turns out there was also a plane I would have been on that ended up crashing off the end of the runway at uh, LaGuardia into the river uh, that same day. That one? I, Whoa. Yeah, that one. I can't remember the flight number, but I would have been on that flight, so I'm glad I didn't make that trip down. But you are a blessed man. I don't know if you want to keep that in. Yeah, we might, we might, we might keep that. Yeah, a little personal interest. <laughs> but along the way, you had some studies with uh, Arnold Jacobs. Just wondering what you, uh, yeah. what, what drew you to Jacobs, and uh, uh, what, what do you remember from those the first lesson or two? Well, what drew me to Jacobs was he was such uh, an icon, you know, in terms of brass playing. And all my friends and brass colleagues and teachers studied with him, and. Uh, of course, I knew about Jacobs. I was in North Texas uh, for a master's degree, and um, uh, directly uh, around that time, uh, 86, 85, 86, I got in a car load uh, with some buddies, Dan Satterwhite and uh, a couple other friends, and we drove up to Chicago in hopes of maybe having some lessons with Jake and uh, Ed Kleinhammer. Mm -hmm. And we ended up having lessons with Kleinhammer. It was my first introduction to one of the giants of the Chicago Symphony, and, uh, and it was fantastic. Ed was so nice and uh, welcoming, and uh, we did not get, we had pictures taken with Ed afterwards, I remember. Um, in fact, we were joking around that we might have Merry Christmas from uh, Jay and Ed that year, <laughs> but uh, Dan actually had a picture like that. But um, we ended up not having a lesson, so I was always in the back of my mind, I wanted to try to play for, for Jacobs. Um, but uh, consequently, further down the line, when I moved to New York, I uh, would have lessons with uh, Steve Norell, who, who had been working with Jake, mm -hmm. and uh, would use some of the uh, sort of things that Jake would do with him, like, um, mm -hmm. you know, he would talk about Jake and uh, with the blowing on the, ha the hand, give me your hand, you know, and uh, yeah. the mm -hmm. ear stream, and uh, he would, you know, touch my stomach and you know all those kind of things and you know but the, the sound and the whole concept he was trying to convey and uh, I wanted to, to get out there and uh, so I called uh, Mr. Jacobs um, on a trip that I was going to take in 1990 <coughs> and I had a, uh, a girlfriend at the time who was a brass player in Chicago and I uh, went out to see her and she said you know I'm, uh, I'm going to take this audition coming up for the Tanglewood uh, Music Festival. And I had already taken that audition a few times and didn't have success. And I had been nervous about auditions. And, and I felt like, uh, you know, she said, why don't, you, uh, why don't you just call them up and see if you can get in? This is my last year uh, being eligible to, uh, to audition. I would have been 30 years old that year. That was a cutoff. So I went ahead and, and signed up, not thinking uh, anything of it, because hadn't done well in the past, um, but Mr. Uh, I was able to get in with Mr. Jacobs, and um, I'll never forget um, going to the Fine Arts Building and getting in the elevator, and, and you know, I was very nervous, um, and getting out with the, the operator there, mm -hmm. opening up the, you know, the huge uh, building, and going into the studio, and walking into this room with 
Uh, it was just filled with the equipment and um, uh, meters and everything. But Mr. Jacobs and the, the aura of, of him just filled the room. I was just uh, so nervous. I think he could tell I was nervous. And the other thing is I wanted to, to you know, because I know that he could measure me and, and I could, you know, he could, I could be a guinea pig, so to speak, mm -hmm. and, and he could tell me what's going on with me. And I was really looking forward to seeing, well, is there something wrong with me that, you know, he can fix? Mm -hmm. And uh, ended up not really doing any measurements of any kind. Um, it had to do more with um, what was going on with my brain and, and what was I trying to say with the excerpts, what was I trying to say with the etudes and uh, and the uh, solo that I was playing at the time. So I uh, I said fine, and uh, as it turned out, I had another lesson uh, lined up for my audition, and uh, I just remember thinking, okay, here we go. We're we're, we're talking about things that I had never talked about, like. Put, put on a hat, put on an actor's hat, you know, become a, uh, a clown on this excerpt, become a pirate or, or a monk or something. Mm -hmm. and, and think about that while you're playing and try to imitate that, you know, and... A lot of conceptualization. A lot of conceptualization. And, and, and of course, immediately things were, were better. I started thinking outside of my own box, you know, and um, I started... Uh, feeling comfortable and a lot more relaxed, I just remember thinking. And, uh, so, uh, long story short, I came out of the, uh, of the lesson and I went on to this audition and I felt like I was, you know, I was, I was just in the, in the stratosphere. I was just very... Uh, Did you feel like you were playing better coming out of the lesson? Oh yeah, I mean, I just felt released somehow. I felt like... Um, you know, I had nothing to lose somehow. And when I went to the audition, I never played better, and I was just very, uh, it was like euphoric coming out of there. And after the, uh, the audition, uh, they came out and said, you know, you might want to finish application fees and this and that because they're really interested in you. And I was, yeah, wow. I mean, this, this I know is a direct result of the time I spent with, with Jake. And since then, you know, um, you know, I, auditions had gotten easier. It's not like I was um, a lot better, mm -hmm. but as a player, um, he just got me to think about and listen to, uh, you know, what I was trying to do and, and who I was imitating, and, and, be, and then become myself. You know, he would have me uh, put numbers, you know, certain numbers on on the notes, and to, to think directly you know, priorities leading to this note or that note, and putting words to. To music and the uh, hidden sonata, I think uh, I specifically remember him saying, you know, "What do you want to say with this opening?" And I came up with a sentence that I'll never forget, and I can't repeat right now, but it really helped me. Really helped me. <laughs> Give me substitute words. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can sing a few bars. I've got mm, big mm, big mm. I've got mm, that would make a bull's mm, look small. <laughs> Something like that. I don't know if you can cut that. But. Why would we want to cut that? It's <laughs> beautifully, beautifully sung. Yeah. That's great. But that's one of my memories, and uh, you know that's the main thing I carry away with him from from that experience. Okay. Um, great. Uh, Jay, the the whole the number system, uh, I, I remember that. Um, sometimes in my lessons, he would talk about that, and mm -hmm. uh, just the what, what would you say the main purpose of the? I think you got that from Tabby Toad Curtis, mm -hmm. uh, from his uh, musicianship classes at Curtis with uh, Marcel Tabby Toad. Do you oh, just okay. re do you recall the the general reason or what he was trying to get you to? I think he was trying to get me to you know prioritize. Uh, in terms of phrasing and, and direction of the phrase and, and, you know, looking towards the climax of a phrase, maybe that would be number one. And uh, so, so, you know, notes and less important notes were less or higher numbers. And yeah, that's the way I interpreted it. I remember, the, uh, I remember in my own lessons, it may have been different with you, it was like 
basically from one to five or zero to five in terms of the numbering system. And uh, I remember it also being used in dynamics in uh, trying to, do you remember any, does that sound familiar? Yeah, that relates to it as well, dynamics and, you know, maybe, um, maybe even uh, tempo change in, in uh, Chalarandi and things like that. So I would write it in my music and peg it on the premise and, and, and internalize it. And I, but, but again, with, with the words, um, the music really had it, made a difference to me. It helped me. Uh, so literally singing those words while you were playing the trombone. Right, right. Singing the words and then taking the trombone away and singing them. Does it, uh, do you recall, did he, he may not have explained well, why that was important. Do you remember? Anything about that? I think I think I had mentioned it about my my nerve problems and, and just ang anxiety when I played mm -hmm. uh, in auditions, and he wanted me to to, to take you know, to step away from that part of it. I think psychologically, it really did work immediately, and just you know, um, in in the room it would work, but it also really had an effect on later on too. Because I always try to imagine you know great singers and. And I try to sing through things all the time. You know, um, previous teachers hadn't really talked about that, and I had some great teachers before going in, and, and I, you know, more disciplined teaching, structured kind of with the notes, and not so much with uh, um, with this the mind, the mind exactly. Yeah, yeah. He he um, would often I would often hear him say either to me in a lesson or I would hear him in other lessons or in master classes, he would say that he was not really at all interested in uh, if you made a mistake, if you had a blemish, if you missed a note mm -hmm. um, on the instrument, uh, but he was very interested in what you were thinking when you made mm -hmm. such a mistake. Uh -huh. um, and I think that just gets to the whole him working with, with the mind and not necessarily the, the meat. But really the right, right. The music up here. Yeah, and I wish I'd had more lessons sometimes to, to get more in depth. But sure, I, I felt it was it's, it's such a s small window of time in my past that I think I did get what I needed to get from him at that time. And and, and since then I've thought about these things and and applied them to my students and related uh, what he would say about the airstream and. Sort of conversational breaths and um, breathing to the music. Don't let the music determine your breath. Or the music should determine your breath, not breathe without that in mind. Um, right. Sort of mentality. Um, well, you. But the thing is, you. You. I mean, you. You had exposure to that whole subject matter from Steve Morrell and right. probably Charlie Merlin. Sure. You yeah, know, and with Charlie as well. Um, sure. I'm sure with the topic of the com co conversation with. Uh, Dan Satterwhite, uh, uh, th you know, through Bill Zephas, um, you know, us being around mm -hmm. decades ago. I'm, I'm sure there was. Right. So you had you had direct exposure, but then you had peripheral exposure as well. Right. Correct. I had I had backup, and uh, I got. It was great to be there at the source, and you know, he's such a. I you know just his voice. I know a lot of people mentioned his voice, but that really did that resonance and. Uh, and just the uh, just being there just had an effect on me that I, I carry with me, and I try to relate it to the students. Mm -hmm. And we created, um, you know, um, yeah. I, I've been lucky to to uh, to have so many great experiences that I can draw on. But that was the one seminal moment where I feel like uh, that's that's where I was off and running in terms of tying everything together. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's that's pretty cool. Now you mentioned having a lesson, or maybe more than one, with Mr. Kleinhammer. What do you remember about that? Well, I remember uh, <laughs> he was. Uh, I mean, it was it was one lesson basically, but he he was very. Um, uh, gosh, how do you say it? Just a warm, warm personality, mm -hmm. and uh, but but very um, very. Uh, is picky with the excerpts that we were working on at the time. Uh, he would sing the excerpts really well, uh, like the Ride of the Valkyries. I just remember, and on, and on, making this motion with his hand. Uh -huh. And I know that friends of mine they like he, he would sing like that as well. Um, he had this big bass drum with a with like a Franken Franken bone or a um, 
a riveted piece of metal for a bell, and I know that's the famous instrument he used in the orchestra, and I was sitting there thinking, wow, he plays that in the Chicago Symphony. You know? <laughs> just, just to be around it, you know, because I, I had so many records I bought and uh, I listened to countless times with, with that brass section, and, and uh, I was intimidated, I guess I have to say, but, um, but they made me feel at home, and same with the lesson I had with, with Chris and Foley. Um, just, they're real people, and, uh, you know, they, uh, they made me feel comfortable, and I felt like I could, I could do what they were asking me to do. Um, so, um, yeah, I was very lucky to, to be there in that moment in time where they were all alive and playing, and, and uh, you know, uh, it was a window in time that, you know, I try to share with people, like, you know, anyway. That's great, and, and uh, it was intimidating, but it was also very uplifting. Sure. Uh, those being around those gentlemen, uh, they were really great professionals, and um, uh, made you feel encouraged, but also got you to learn more. Oh, absolutely. Well. They planted seeds. And they did. And then those seeds, of course, were planted with other colleagues, and we share notes, and we and we share pedagogy now, and and I subscribe to certain things. And in my my lessons now, my my students now, I, I I'll come up with things, analogies that I think that the students really need um, because you know, they may not understand some of the, you know, all the breathing of ideas unless you come up with ideas that they can relate to. And so I, I, and I always think, well, where did I come up with that? And uh, it, was always, it was always either Jacobs or, or Consequence teachers, you know, where I steal their material. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's, I think it's there to be stolen, so yeah. Yeah. So, excuse me. It's okay. Well, look. Um, since you have the bottle, I Puddles would like oh. me to present that with you. Uh, we pre-gifted it. The formal. We pre-gifted because uh, uh, Jay was getting thirsty, so we thought, well, uh -huh. we, get so we have this water bottle here, so we'll just uh, we'll give you. So this is the top uh -huh. that really makes that complete. Oh, okay. And, uh, Puddles would like to uh, for you to have this as a token of, of our Thanksgiving that uh, that you would uh, thank you come so and talk much. to us. Thank you. Please appreciate it. the top uh, uh, in good health. All right, I'll stick that on my belt. All right, that was good. It's so great to see you, Mike. Great to see you, Jay. It's been yeah. a long time. Too long. Well, as I say uh, often, uh, it's one of the great joys of this project is getting to reconnect with with folks. Right. And the videos you do such a great job. I I really enjoy watching them uh, and how you um, cultivate conversations about these things. Well, thanks. I've enjoyed my conversation with you. Yeah. And Puddle says you're number one. Oh gosh, thanks, Puddle. You know how to make a guy feel good. It's 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 uh, rainy today here too, so perfect duck weather. It is perfect duck weather. It's actually quite a downpour. And now back to you.